AF Area Selection. AF Area Selection lets you control the size of the area your AF system is using when it reads your subject. In effect, it lets you change the size of a focusing point. You have six possible AF area options available. You make them available, or temporarily remove any you don't expect to use, in the fourth AF menu under Select AF Area Selection Mode. The Single Point AF option is always checked and cannot be temporarily removed. Press Set to enable desired area modes. Highlight OK. Press Set to activate selection. To cycle through the available choices, press the AF Point Selection button on the rear of the camera. You don't have to hold it in. Then, press the multifunction button. Each time it's pressed, you'll change to a different AF area option. When you reach the AF area type you want to use, stop and tap the shutter button halfway. Spot AF. Select any one AF point and reduce its size for even greater selective focus control. Single Point AF. This is your basic AF area option to manually select and focus with one single AF point at a time. You can freely move to any one of the 61 available AF points. AF Point Expansion. Four points or eight points. Select any one single AF point and add a cluster of either four or eight surrounding points. AF point expansion is especially useful with moving subjects and subjects that don't have a lot of detail, texture, and contrast. Zone AF provides a cluster of AF points and the camera will use all of them and focus on the nearest subject within the zone you've chosen. You can move the active zone to any of nine preset locations. Auto AF point selection. All the AF points are active, and there's a surrounding line outside the AF array in the viewfinder. With one-shot AF, focus will be achieved on the AF points covering the nearest subject. When in AI Servo AF, select one starting AF point to begin tracking a moving subject. If the subject moves away from this point, the AF system will automatically activate other points. AF Area Selection lets you really leverage the power of the 61-point AF system. Whether your goal is very fine and precise focus on just a tiny area of a subject, or maintaining focus on a large and rapidly moving subject, the different options give photographers a great tool to get the job done. The AF Configuration Tool the new AF configuration tool provides the ability to quickly and intuitively fine-tune the AF system for any type of moving subject you may be shooting. Whether a subject is moving continuously at high speed or changing speeds with erratic direction in their movement, you can tailor the AI Servo AF for the subject and the conditions at hand. Six preset AF cases are provided for dealing with real-life situations in which AI Servo AF settings may be difficult to adjust. The six cases are selected in the first AF menu. Case 1. Versatile Multipurpose Setting. Sets the camera to track subjects with consistent, predictable movement. Case 2. Continue to track subjects ignoring possible obstacles. Even if the subject briefly moves off the AF point, or something momentarily gets between you and the subject, the camera will continue to track the original subject. Case 3. Instantly focus on subjects suddenly entering AF points. When a new subject is detected in the active AF point area, the camera will focus on it immediately. Case 4. Subjects that accelerate or decelerate quickly. Changes the AI Servo AF to react instantly to sudden changes or stops and starts in moving subjects. This is the opposite of Case 1. Case 5. 
erratic subjects moving quickly in any direction. Anytime you're using more than one AF point, case 5 makes the camera switching from point to point faster. This way, you can continue to focus track erratic side to side movement. Case 6 Subjects that change speed and move erratically. This case also speeds up automatic AF point switching, but additionally tailors AI Servo AF to react instantly to changes in subject speed. The new AF configuration tool allows you to easily fine tune the autofocus system in your camera to accurately track and capture subject movement that previously may have been too unpredictable to follow. EOS 1DX Drive Modes The EOS 1DX is not only fast, but allows you to tailor its drive settings to work in a way that's comfortable for you. By default, high speed continuous drive captures up to 12 frames per second, allowing for superb sequences of subject movement and substantially increasing the chances of capturing an ideal action shot. Even at 12 frames per second, you can shoot RAW, RAW plus JPEG, or JPEG only. Low speed continuous drive, by default, shoots 3 frames per second, sufficient for many everyday action sequences while preventing you from having to sort through hundreds of sequence photos afterwards. You can alter the settings for continuous drive speed, allowing you to designate the maximum rate of high speed and low speed continuous shooting. In the third custom functions menu, continuous shooting speed allows you to assign the shots per second rate for high speed and low speed continuous shooting modes. To change high speed continuous advance from its default 12 frames per second setting, highlight high speed and press set. Now use the quick control dial to choose a rate between 2 and 12 frames per second and press set to finalize your selection. Highlight low speed and press set. Use the quick control dial to choose a continuous shooting rate between 1 and 11 frames per second. Press set to finalize your selection. Please note that at ISO 32000 or higher, the maximum continuous shooting speed will be limited to approximately 10 frames per second. You can unlock the super high speed 14 frames per second shooting mode, a record breaking drive mode in which focus and exposure are fixed once you begin shooting a sequence. When you fully press the shutter button, the mirror will lock up and the viewfinder becomes black, preventing you from being able to move the camera to follow subject movement. Continuous AI Servo AF is not possible, so use the 12 frames per second high speed setting for ordinary focus tracking of fast moving subjects. Only JPEG images are possible at 14 frames per second. So prior to enabling this drive mode, access the second shooting menu, select image type and size, and use the quick control dial to choose an appropriate JPEG file size. Large JPEGs deliver the camera's full 18 megapixel image resolution. To make super high speed drive mode available, go to the third custom functions menu. Restrict drive modes, allows you to designate which drive modes are available for selection. With the quick control dial, scroll over to the continuous icon with the number 14 and then press set. Use the quick control dial to select OK and press set. Now super high speed drive is available along with all the other drive settings. To enable a specific drive mode, Press the AF Drive button on top of the camera. Use the quick control dial to scroll through the drive options. You will be able to view them using the information display on top of the camera. Continuous with the blinking H symbol represents 14 frames per second super high speed drive, 
whereas the stationary H symbol represents standard 12 frames per second high speed drive. Tap the shutter button halfway to finalize your selection. Custom controls in the fifth custom functions menu lets you program one of two buttons to activate super high speed drive when pressed. The AF on button or the AE lock button. With options for low speed, high speed, and super high speed that can even be applied to multi exposure functions, you have at your fingertips a totally flexible tool for capturing anything from a candlelit portrait to a Sports Illustrated cover. AI Servo in-camera adjustments. In-camera AI Servo AF adjustments allow you to easily refine predictive autofocus settings, optimizing the way in which you capture moving subjects. Optimizing AF settings in AI Servo AF with the new 61-point AF system is easier than ever before allowing you to lock in and focus track almost any moving subject, whether the movement is erratic or predictable. Within each of the six configuration cases, there are three settings that allow for fine tuning. Simply select the case and press the Image Protect button to access. Tracking Sensitivity. Alter the way that the AF system responds when subjects move away from the AF points. Responsive tailors the camera to react and refocus faster when there are sudden changes in what your AF point sees. Locked on tells the AF system to resist changes and continue tracking an original subject. Acceleration deceleration tracking. This is a landmark setting in SLR AF systems that allows you to tailor the AF to the type of subject movement you expect to be shooting. Zero tunes the focus tracking for continuously moving subjects. Plus one and plus two increase the AF system's response for subjects that change speeds or stop and start frequently. AF point auto switching. Anytime you're working with more than one AF point active, this setting affects how quickly the camera will change from one point to another. Zero balances AF stability with tracking, providing gradual AF point switching. With plus one and plus two, the AF point will be switched more rapidly when slight changes in subject location are detected. The AF configuration tool isn't the only way to fine tune the 61 point AF system. The priority settings further tailor the system for the way you want to shoot. These are in the second AF menu. AI Servo First Image Priority. This feature allows you to customize the response of the camera for the first picture. Equal Priority. The camera allows a small preset time for AF to read and focus on the subject without noticeable delay in firing the shutter for the first shot. Release Priority. Retunes the camera to give the fastest possible shutter response time even if AF hasn't been able to fully latch on to a subject. Focus priority. Prioritizes focus so that you cannot shoot the first picture unless it is in focus. AI Servo Second Image Priority. When shooting a continuous sequence, this allows you to customize the response of your camera for the second and subsequent shots. Equal priority. Camera attempts to maintain the fastest shooting speed but allows frame rates to slow down if required for the AF system to read and track a subject. Shooting speed priority. Prioritizes shooting speed to take shots at the fastest frames per second rate, even if AF hasn't confirmed sharp focus for each shot. Focus priority. During continuous shooting, the drive speed will slow down as needed to ensure the sharpest possible focus for each shot. You will now be able to easily fine tune AI servo settings to accurately capture subjects in motion, reducing the chances that the camera's AF system will be thrown off by momentary obstacles or abnormal movement. Audio options. There are several new options to improve the sound quality of your movies. 
These new options include audio adjust and silent control. With these new options, you can easily and discreetly control sound before and during movie recording. Specialized menu screens become available when the camera is set for video recording. Within the fifth shooting menu, the silent control option enables touch sensor operation on the inner area of the quick control dial. Press the Q button during recording to bring up the quick control screen, lightly touching the top or bottom of the inner area of the quick control dial selects items and touching the left or right of the dial changes the setting you've selected. You can silently adjust the following options during movie shooting. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO speed, audio recording level, and exposure compensation. Settings can be changed without moving the dial during video recording significantly reducing operational sounds. The audio level can be adjusted both before and during shooting. The audio recording level is manually adjustable over 64 steps. You can visually check the sound recording level on the quick control screen. Press the Q button to activate it. With the quick control screen displayed, you can also change audio level by selecting the sound recording level. Highlight it with the multi-controller and turn the quick control dial or tap the left and right of the dial if you've activated silent control. The audio adjust and silent control options give you freedom and flexibility to both check and quickly alter settings on your audio functions. You have the ability to monitor and make changes to settings while recording video, giving you more precise control over the sound being recorded in your movie. Finder Display – Intelligent Viewfinder The Intelligent Viewfinder uses a translucent LCD for a superimposed display of the 61 AF points, grid lines, and camera settings. Even though there's a lot of potential information, the Intelligent Viewfinder can be configured to show only what you're comfortable with and only for the required period of time. The Viewfinder's LCD overlay consists of black lines, but these can be briefly illuminated for visibility during low light shooting. This red illumination flashes briefly when focus is locked on in one-shot AF mode to help you confirm where the camera focused. The illumination doesn't stay on continuously, and the AF points and other viewfinder information don't light up in AI Servo AF mode. You can change the finder's illumination setting in the fifth AF menu. The viewfinder display illumination option allows you to select either Automatic, red illumination occurs in dim areas only, illumination always on, or illumination always off. Depending on your preferences, you can select how the AF points are displayed in the viewfinder. In the fifth AF menu, the option AF point display during focus offers five settings. Selected Constant displays only the selected AF point during metering and when focus is achieved. All Constant displays all 61 AF points as small squares on the focusing screen with the selected AF point or points highlighted with larger squares. This makes it easy to see the locations of other available AF points if you want to move from one to another. Selected Pre-AF Focused displays the selected AF point continually before AF starts, but clears the AF points from view once AF is completed 
or once focus tracking has started if you're in AI Servo AF. Selected Focused keeps the viewfinder clear before AF starts and displays the selected AF point momentarily at the start of AF and again once focus has been achieved. Disable Display clears the display completely so that the selected AF point is not seen after it has been chosen. The Intelligent Viewfinder also offers a grid line display to guide composition. In the second setup menu, select Viewfinder Grid Display. You can choose to turn on the display by selecting Enable or turn the display off by selecting Disable. The viewfinder displays information about various camera settings, including metering mode, shooting mode, shutter speed, aperture, ISO setting, battery charge, image format, maximum burst rate, and exposure compensation. When you fully press in the shutter button and the camera begins to expose an image, this information temporarily disappears. You do have the option to keep this information displayed during exposure. In the fourth Custom Functions menu, Viewfinder Info During Exposure allows you to keep the information on when an exposure is being taken. This is useful during continuous shooting when you need to check vital information such as the exposure or number of shots possible. Note that this option is not available when the shooting mode is set to bulb exposure. The Intelligent Viewfinder makes it possible to display a lot of information, but gives you great flexibility in deciding how much is displayed at any one time. Multiple Exposure Shooting This allows you to shoot between two and nine separate frames and then combine them into one composite image. This function also offers several options for how the separate images are combined in camera to achieve the final image. You can access multiple exposure options in the first shooting menu. Within this menu, you can enable the multiple exposure function and set various relevant options. For multiple exposures, you first select between two shooting procedures. Function and Control Priority, or Continuous Shooting Priority. Function Control Priority is the multi-exposure setting that most users will likely reach for first. It enables you to take each multiple exposure image separately and check the image as you go along. This limits continuous shooting speed, but gives you more control over composition and exposure. Continuous shooting priority is intended for a rapid series of continuous shots that will be combined into one multi-exposure, making it well suited for sports and other moving subjects. It maximizes shooting speed, but gives you less precise control over exposure and composition. Here is where the new in-camera multi-exposure feature allows you to really get creative. You have four different options for combining the images you've taken into one new multi-exposure file. The additive method simply stacks each image on top of the other, much like multi-exposures in a film camera. If bright areas on two separate images overlap, their combined brightness will increase. Photographers can adjust the exposure of each individual image separately. It's often necessary to underexpose images, especially if bright areas will overlap in the final multi-exposure. The average method automatically underexposes each frame so that the finished multi-exposure has the same overall exposure level that a single standard image of the scene would have. It's ideal when two or more frames of the same scene will be combined to avoid overexposure as images are composited. 
the bright method compares the individual images to each other, giving more importance to the bright areas. Bright objects within the multiple exposures will be emphasized as the source images are combined. A classic example would be two shots of the nighttime sky with city lights and a separate shot of the full moon. Using the bright method, when the files are combined, the dark areas won't get progressively brighter, and the bright areas will appear at full brightness. The dark method compares the frames to each other, giving more importance to the darker areas. Dark objects within the multiple exposures are emphasized as they're joined into a finished multi-exposure image. This can be effective for removing unwanted bright objects or light reflections. You can choose the number of frames you'd like to use in a finished composite image. Up to nine original files can be combined in camera into a single finished multi-exposure image. If you are unsure of how many frames you will use, set the number of exposures to its maximum of nine frames and create a finished multiple exposure out of the images you do shoot. You can either save all images used in the multi-exposure image or save only the resulting multi-exposure image. You can have the multiple exposure function active for only one finished multiple exposure composite image before it automatically returns to normal shooting mode, or you can choose to keep the multi-exposure function active. Four control method choices for multiple exposures provide unprecedented in-camera control over the final image, greatly expanding what's possible without requiring time at the computer. Having the ability to digitally create multiple exposures breathes new life into an artistic method that film shooters have used for years. Manual Selection of AF Points the ability to manually select AF points gives you full control over the 61-point AF array, ensuring a clean focus regardless of your scene composition. There are several methods for moving around the AF array. Press the AF point select button on the back of the camera. The rear quick control dial moves points up and down. and the multi-controller moves up, down, side to side, and diagonally. This method should be familiar if you have used a Canon DSLR before to manually select your AF points. You can quickly change AF points manually by just pressing the multi-controller. No need to first press the AF point select button. Here's how. Enter Custom Controls in the fifth Custom Functions menu. Highlight the Multi-Controller option and press Set. Highlight AF Point Direct Selection. Now press the Info button. You can now dictate what happens when you press the Multi-Controller straight in during shooting. Option 1. Automatically select the center AF point. Option 2. If you have registered an AF point, then pressing the multi-controller while shooting will immediately return you to that memorized AF point. Note that if you have no registered AF points, then this option will also switch AF points to the center. Another possibility is to immediately move AF points side to side in the viewfinder by just turning the quick control dial. Select the Quick Control Dial option within the Custom Controls menu. Highlight AF Point Direct Selection and press Set. Manual Selection of AF Points. Here is an option to instantly move to a previously memorized AF point. It's perfect for quickly moving from the center point to an off-center point by just pressing a button. To register or memorize an AF point, 
hold the camera to your eye, and navigate to the point you want to memorize. Press and hold in the rear AF point select button. Press the ISO button on top of the camera. SELHP will now appear in the finder. Note that HP means home position, indicating that the point has been memorized. Once you tap the shutter button to lock in your choice, the memorized point will blink in the viewfinder to indicate it's been registered. Now configure any of the following buttons with the Custom Controls menu in the fifth Custom Functions menu to instantly return you to the memorized AF point. For the AF on button or AE lock button, select the button you want to use and highlight metering and AF start. Press the info button and select registered AF point. Press set. To use the depth of field preview button, the multifunction two button, or the AF stop button, select the button you want to use. Highlight switch to registered AF point. Press set. Note that the lens AF stop button is only available on select Canon Super Telephoto lenses. To use the multi-controller, select the multi-controller button, highlight AF point direct selection, press info, highlight switch to registered AF point, and press set. The button that you have customized will now instantly return you to the memorized AF point. To clear a registered AF point, either memorize a new AF point or highlight the registered AF point, press and hold in the AF point selection button and simultaneously press the exposure compensation button. SELAF will now appear in the finder. A very cool option, especially if you shoot a lot of vertical pictures, is to have the camera automatically switch AF points as you rotate from horizontal to vertical and vice versa. This is Canon's orientation linked AF point feature. By default, it's turned off. Activate it in the fourth AF menu. Hold the camera horizontally and select any available AF point as described before. You are free to choose any AF area mode too. Now turn the camera vertically. Select any AF point you want for vertical shots. You can also pick a different AF area mode if you like. The AF point can be set separately for when the grip is held at the top or the bottom. Now the camera will switch AF points or even AF area settings instantly when you change between horizontal and vertical. Manually selecting and memorizing AF points will allow you to quickly and easily change which specific parts of the scene your AF will focus upon. Video Compression Method You now have a choice of two video compression methods, allowing you to prioritize either small file size or superior image quality and ease of editing. Video files are still recorded using the same codec as previous EOS SLRs, but now users can select the type of compression that fits their needs. All I compression or IPB compression. This low compression format is preferred for easy video editing. Image quality is often superior with all I video file compression. With all I compression, all frames are processed as single images and each frame can be edited individually without losing image quality. For this reason, the overall movie file size will be nearly three times larger when using all I compression versus the IPB method. A four gigabyte video file 
using the all-eye compression would record roughly five and a half continuous minutes. This high compression method minimizes the overall movie file size, making it perfect for long-running clips that require less involved editing. A single 4 gigabyte file using IPB compression can record up to about 13 minutes of continuous video at full HD 1080p. Adjacent frames are evaluated and groups of frames are created for compression. For this reason, it is more difficult to extract individual frames and precisely edit movie files that have been compressed using IPB. With the camera set for video operation, access the fourth shooting menu. Select the Movie Recording Size option. Select the desired combination of recording size, frames per second rate, and compression method. The quick control screen will confirm the active movie settings. You can now utilize either IPB or all eye compression methods when shooting movies. Your choice depends largely on how you intend to edit and use the movie footage. EOS Subject Recognition Technology Intelligent Subject Analysis and Intelligent Tracking and Recognition The Intelligent Subject Analysis System incorporates face and color recognition technologies for more stable, accurate metering performance in both automatic exposure and ETTL flash metering. Once a face is detected, the new metering sensor can compare skin tones with other areas of the scene to produce more accurate exposure calculations. The Intelligent Tracking and Recognition System uses the Intelligent Subject Analysis data to totally change the character of how the EOS 1DX follows a moving subject when using automatic AF point selection. There are times when using a broad area to focus, rather than a single AF point, provides the compositional freedom you need, or may be the only way to continually shoot a sequence of an erratically moving subject. When automatic AF point selection is active and combined with AI Servo AF and EOS ITR, the camera utilizes the power of the 100,000 pixel RGB metering system to not only evaluate exposure, but it assesses and recognizes the initial subject you focused upon. Its size, shape, color, and even detail are all used to identify the main subject in a scene. And as you shoot a continuous sequence, EOS ITR uses this color information to help the AF system continually update where a moving subject is in the frame and which of the 61 focus points to use to keep on the subject. In the fourth AF menu, Auto AF Point Selection, EOS ITR AF, gives you the option to enable or disable the Intelligent Tracking and Recognition System. When ITR is enabled, Automatic AF Point Selection is based upon sharpness information, color information, and face detection information. When disabled, only sharpness information from the AF points is used for AF point auto selection. If you manually select a single AF point, the intelligent tracking and recognition system is disabled even if it's been activated in the AF menu. The revolutionary new 100,000 pixel RGB metering sensor in the EOS 1DX improves the precision of automatic exposure and it also revolutionizes AF capabilities when you ask the camera to follow an erratically moving subject. Leveraging the power of intelligent subject analysis and intelligent tracking and recognition technology, you will find automatic AF point selection has a newfound power and that in some situations it's now the right tool to use for fast moving subjects. AE lock with hold feature.
Auto Exposure Lock is an excellent method of controlling exposure without losing the speed and convenience of automation. AE Lock freezes the camera's exposure settings. For example, if you're shooting a portrait and want to place the subject off-center, take a meter reading off the subject first. AE Lock then allows you to lock in that meter reading before moving the camera to recompose the subject. This ensures that exposure won't shift if the background is lighter or darker than the subject itself. The problem with traditional AE Lock is that it's difficult to keep a reading in place for any length of time or for more than one or two pictures at a time. Canon's new AE Lock and Hold addresses this problem. AE Lock and Hold changes how AE Lock functions. Once AE Lock and Hold is activated, exposure remains locked until Auto Power Off kicks in and the entire camera goes into sleep mode. AE Lock and Hold makes it easy to use auto exposure to quickly get to a desired exposure and then lock in that reading for as long as you need, regardless of how many shots you take. If you adjust the auto power off time, a locked exposure can be held up to 30 minutes. Or, if auto power off is disabled, the camera will hold the exposure until you turn the camera itself off. To designate which button will activate the hold function in the fifth custom functions menu, access custom controls. You can now assign AE lock with hold to one of several buttons. The AF on button, the AE lock button, the depth of field preview button, the lens AF stop button available on certain Canon super telephoto lenses, or either of the two multifunction buttons. It's now also much simpler to manually turn off AE Lock. When AE Lock Withhold is active, just press the designated button again to clear it and return to normal operation. The AE Lock and Hold feature makes AE Lock a lot more practical when you want to use it for more than one or two pictures at a time. And it even makes it easier to clear when you want to return to normal auto exposure. We recommend if you use auto exposure frequently to try the new AE lock withhold feature and see how it fits into your shooting routine. Video basic operation. Basic video operation is now easier and more intuitive. You have several options for using and customizing movie functions. To enable movie recording, access the fourth shooting menu, select Live View Movie Settings, press Set, and then scroll to Movies. Press Set to lock in that choice. The camera is now ready to record video or shoot still images. Once movie shooting is enabled, the shooting menus change. Video related items appear in the fourth shooting menu, and a fifth shooting menu becomes available. Movie Shoot button in the fifth shooting menu allows you to assign the Movie Start Stop function to the multifunction button only, or to both the multifunction button and the shutter button. Designating the shutter button to start and stop video recording has several benefits. You may find it more intuitive, there will be less camera shake and operational sound. And it makes it possible to use any of several Canon remote control cords to start and stop movie recording. Designating the movie recording start stop function to the multifunction button only will allow you to use the shutter button to capture still frames while recording movies. To begin recording video, you must first press the live view button, then Press either the multifunction button or the shutter button if it has been activated for video recording. In the fifth custom functions menu, 
the Custom Controls feature provides additional options for designating the Movie Recording Start-Stop function. You can assign this function to the Depth of Field Preview button, the Multifunction button, or the Multifunction 2 button. Once you assign Start Movie Recording when Movie Recording Set to one of these custom controls, pressing the designated button will automatically switch the camera to Live View mode and begin movie recording. To autofocus during movie recording, you can use the custom controls to assign the autofocus function to either the rear AF on button or the AE lock button. You can select which focus mode you want to use on the fourth shooting menu screen under AF mode. You can select live mode AF, live face detect, or quick mode AF. You can also focus manually. This will allow you to follow your subject and continually focus. It is recommended to find focus before you start recording, whether you choose to focus automatically or manually. Manual focus pulling during actual recording is possible, but requires a skilled and steady hand. With easily customizable options and features, basic video operation is more intuitive and quicker than ever before. Playback and Magnify Image Playback functions have been redesigned making image management faster and easier. Notable new playback options include more intuitive button placement, improved magnification features, image protection, audio memo recording, and rating options. The entire image checking process can quickly be completed using the left hand. The addition of a zoom button simplifies zoom ratio adjustment. Zooming from quick view and pre-configuring the zoom ratio are also possible. Within the fifth Custom Functions menu, Custom Controls will allow you to configure the Set button for the Magnify Reduce function during Quick View and Image Playback. Once configured, pressing the Set button during Quick View or Playback will zoom into the image using a pre-selected magnification ratio. After pressing the set button, you can turn the main dial to quickly magnify or reduce the displayed image. You can magnify different parts of the image area using the eight-way multi-controller. Pressing the set button again returns you back to the original view. You can also change the initial magnification to be used during image playback by adjusting the magnification options in the third playback menu. With the 1x no magnification option, magnification begins from a single image display. With the 2x, 4x, 8x, and 10x magnify from center options, magnification begins at the selected amount from the center of the image. The Actual Size from Selected Point option displays pixels in the recorded image at approximately 100%. If the photo was shot using a manually selected AF point, magnification begins from that point. The final option, Same as Last Magnification from Center, begins magnification from the center of the image at the same ratio you last used for the previous image. By setting the magnification position and ratio in advance, you can save yourself the trouble of adjusting magnification for each image. In the sixth Custom Functions menu, the Default Erase option allows you to specify which on-screen button, Cancel or Erase, is highlighted by default on the erasure confirmation after the trash can button is pressed. Setting erase as the default option makes it faster to eliminate unwanted images, ultimately speeding up the image management process. 
In the fifth custom functions menu, the option image protect audio memo button function provides you with four options for this button. With the protect, hold to record memo. Pressing the image protection audio record button will protect the current image you are viewing during playback. This allows you to prevent selected images from being erased during image management. Hold in the same button for two seconds to begin recording a voice memo and release the button when done. The Record Memo Image Protect Disabled option enables only the audio memo recording function. The image protection function is disabled. Note that you can record multiple memos for each image. They will play back as one continuous memo. With the Play Memo Hold to Record Memo option, pressing the Image Protect Audio Record button during image playback will play the audio memos recorded on each image. You can hold in the button for two seconds to record a memo, releasing the button when done. The final option, Rating Image Protect and Audio Memo Disabled, allows you to use the Image Protect Audio Record button to apply star ratings to each image. These ratings can be read using Canon's DPP software, as well as by some third-party imaging programs. Ratings begin at off, and each press of the button will toggle through one to five stars and then back to off. Improved playback features and new button placement create a more intuitive image management system. Magnification, image protection, audio recording, and rating options make it faster and easier to critically review your images and potentially save you time later at the computer. Spot metering. Spot metering normally is taken from the dead center of the viewfinder regardless of which focusing point is active. It's the method always used when the camera is set for automatic AF point selection. Spot metering takes a reading from about 2.5% of the overall scene. Reading such a tiny area allows for very careful and precise exposure. To activate spot metering when shooting through the viewfinder, you have two options. The normal method is to press the metering exposure compensation button on top of the camera, turn the top main dial to toggle through the available metering methods, then tap the shutter button halfway down to lock in your choice. A feature that's especially handy when you want to make two or more changes to camera settings at the same time is to use the quick control button. Press the quick control button, then use the multi controller to highlight the metering method and turn the top main dial or quick control dial to toggle through available options. There are multiple options for spot metering. AE lock and hold is a new Canon feature and it's ideal to use with spot metering. You can use spot metering to take a very precise exposure reading and then activate AE lock to maintain that reading while you recompose the scene and shoot your images. If you're going to be shooting numerous pictures and the lighting won't change, the new AE lock withhold feature is especially useful. Linking spot metering to the AF point moves the 2.5% spot area to match whichever AF point is in use. This way, if you're using an off-center AF point, you can focus and take a spot meter reading simultaneously and don't have to move the camera to take an exposure reading. Because of the new 100,000 pixel RGB metering used in the EOS 1DX, Spot metering can be linked to any of the 61 AF points. To move spot metering off-center, go to the first custom function menu. Select spot metering linked to AF point. Press set and use the quick control dial to scroll to linked to active AF point. 
press set again to lock it in. Be aware that if you change your AF area to automatic AF point selection or the zone AF setting, spot metering will return to the center, even if you're set for spot metering linked to active AF point, regardless of which AF points are active at the moment. For more complex scenes with mixed lighting, multi-spot metering gives you the ability to take up to eight separate spot meter readings and have the camera average them into one final meter reading. In the fifth custom functions menu, go into custom controls and assign flash exposure lock or FEL to one of the following buttons. The AF on button, the AE lock button, the depth of field preview button, or one of the two available multi-function buttons. Be sure the EOS 1DX is in an automatic exposure mode. Multi-spot metering doesn't function in the manual exposure mode. This reading is saved in memory for at least 16 seconds. It will stay active longer if you occasionally tap the shutter button halfway down. Move the spot area to read a different part of the scene and each additional button press registers an additional spot reading to be averaged for final exposure. Normal single spot meter readings are especially useful in the manual exposure mode. If you want the camera to always switch to spot metering whenever you go into manual mode, you can set the EOS 1DX up to do exactly that. In the second custom functions menu, metering used in manual exposure allows you to select a metering mode and links it to manual exposure mode. Whenever you go into manual mode, this is the metering pattern that will be active. If you set this to specified metering mode, the camera applies whichever metering mode you've set in the conventional way using the top LCD panel. Spot metering gives you very fine control of exposure and is an ideal tool to compare the brightness of different parts of a scene. High speed ethernet connection. A new external connection port makes stable, high-speed Ethernet communication possible. Ethernet compatibility allows plug-in access for high-speed wired network data transfers and permits direct access to a network over a much greater distance than a wireless transmitter could. In the third setup menu, the Communication Settings option allows you to enable the camera's communication function as well as configure network settings. Network settings can be configured using the connection wizard or for more manual control using communication mode and setup. FTP transfer allows you to send images to a computer that has been set up to function as an FTP server. There are four ways to do this. Automatic transfer mode will automatically send each image after it's been taken. Image selection and transfer mode allows you to shoot images first, then go back in and select images individually by folder or by card and transfer only the selected images. Transfer with set mode enables the set button for image transfer. Transfer with caption mode allows you to transfer images that have had a registered caption applied via Canon's EOS Utility software. There's also an FTP resend function. Remote shooting with EOS Utility allows for secure and flexible tethered shooting so that you can shoot images and immediately transfer them to your computer for viewing with the EOS Utility software. WFT Server allows up to three separate computers to access the camera 
using an ordinary web browser. This means the camera can theoretically connect to any web-enabled device in the world with internet access. With WFT Server Active, see a live view of what the lens sees, actively control the camera remotely, and allow up to three users to view the contents of the camera's memory card and drag and drop any desired images to their computer's hard drive. Media Server. This allows the camera to connect to any TV or third-party device that's DLNA compatible and display images on that device. Up to 10 EOS 1DX cameras can be connected using Ethernet LAN cables and a third-party Ethernet hub. With one camera designated as the master camera, its time can be applied to any of the connected cameras. Ethernet connectivity ensures a stable, high-speed connection with more flexibility than USB connections and fewer potential interference problems than wireless transmission. It makes shooting, downloading, and editing images and videos faster and easier. Video, time code operation basics. Time code, a new feature, is now available for EOS movie files. Embedding time code into movie files increases editing efficiency with traditional video editing software. The time code is in a format to synchronize the video with time. It is displayed as hour, minute, second, and frame. Please note, during ordinary playback as well as shooting, the frames count of the time code is not displayed on the camera's LCD monitor, but it is being recorded and will be visible when editing in compatible video editing software. Once the camera has been set for video operation, Time code options can be set in the fifth shooting menu. Within the time code menu, there are five options. Count up, start time setting, movie record count, movie play count, and drop frame. The time code option count up has two settings, record run and free run. This setting is perfect if you will later use editing software to arrange the movie clips within a timeline. With the record run setting, time code is only active while a movie is being recorded. Each time you begin shooting a new movie clip, the time code will begin from the values at which the preceding clip ended. The count is not reset, even if a movie file is deleted or the memory card is formatted. The free run setting counts time code even if a movie is not being recorded. This setting is perfect for editing movies when multiple cameras are used to record the same scene. You can confirm the time of a recording by first specifying a value for start time. This feature allows you to specify a start time at which time code will begin counting. The start time feature offers three options, manual input setting, reset, and set to camera time. The manual input setting allows you to specify the starting time by manually inputting values for hour, minute, second, and frame. You can use this function to prevent a duplicated time code, especially when you record a movie with multiple cameras. The reset option can be used to return the time code count to zero. This feature will reset the time code for record run or manual input setting. Set to camera time is a setting that will sync the starting time code values to the built-in clock of your camera. This will make chronological editing easier when several cameras are used to shoot a movie. The movie record count option allows you to choose which information is to be displayed while shooting a movie. The record time setting will display the time that has elapsed since the start of shooting a movie. The time code setting will display the running time code. 
The Movie Play Count option allows you to choose which information is to be displayed while playing back a movie. The Record Time setting will display the time that has elapsed since the start of shooting a movie. The Time Code setting will display the running time code. When the Drop Frame option is enabled, the way in which frames are counted and labeled is altered to eliminate the discrepancy between time code and the actual time. This can be especially important if you're recording long-running individual video clips. Time code embedding and its related options increase the ease and efficiency of the movie editing process. Back Button AF Utilizing the Back Button AF feature allows you to customize which buttons you use to focus and meter and gives you more custom control over the AF system. The default standard camera operation involves simply pressing the shutter button halfway to activate both AF and metering. However, you can separate AF activation from the shutter release and metering for more effective AF operation. There are multiple ways to customize the activation of your AF system. They are all available in the fifth Custom Functions menu under Custom Controls. This menu allows you to set the function of specific buttons and controllers. For Back Button AF, you do two things. Change one of the rear buttons to make it activate AF and remove AF from the shutter button. Available buttons for Back Button AF include the AF On button, AE Lock button, or the Lens AF Stop button, which is only available on certain Canon Super Telephoto lenses. To activate one of the back buttons for AF, highlight the button in the Custom Controls menu. Press Set. Highlight the Metering and AF Start option. Then press Set. Once you link the metering and AF start function to one of the back buttons, you activate AF by pressing that button. Just setting a back button for AF doesn't change how the shutter button works. To remove AF activation from the shutter button, select the shutter button in the first Custom Controls menu. Turn the quick control dial to highlight either the metering icon or the AE lock icon. Lock in your choice by pressing set. Now a half press on the shutter button either starts continuous metering or if you chose AE lock will lock metering. You may prefer to lock focus by pressing a button especially if you shoot a lot in AI servo AF. This is especially helpful if you'd rather activate AF with the shutter button. By locking focus, it's possible to avoid having the focus thrown off if something momentarily enters the picture area while you're shooting. AF off and AF stop are the terms Canon uses for focus lock. The following buttons can be customized for AF stop. The AE lock button, AF on button, depth of field preview button, or the lens AF stop button on select Canon lenses. Selecting AF off in the custom controls menu for any of these buttons will turn it into a focus lock. Just press set after you choose AF off to complete that choice. Activating back button AF or focus lock will give you more customized control over AF operation, making it faster and easier to achieve consistently sharp images.